Hello and welcome to the Cowboy for Game Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast. I'm your host Jake. Today I'm joined by Bragg from Braggio hey. and Ben from Nolan TCG. Hello. Uh, before we get into our week of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, just a quick thing uh, atop a show. A quick congratulations to uh, one-time presenter and long-time friend of the podcast, Andrew Jones and his wife. Uh, got married over the weekend. A got beautiful ceremony. Last night, as of recording. Just, I'm just giving context out. for the fact that I'm going to fall asleep halfway through this. Oh, yeah, we're ruined. I'm very tired. Um, but, yeah, very big congratulations to the both. Uh, beautiful ceremony. Had a lot of fun. Uh, and, yeah, all the best to you. So, uh, moving on from that, how was our week in New Year, Brad? I just still playing Tempi on Master Jewel. Uh, I don't know if I said it last week. Thank God I didn't play Tempi in real life because this last week... I think I'm pretty sick of the deck. <laughs> <laughs> it is like, you know how like some decks you get sick of because like it kind of just does the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Like Tempi is very much in that funnel. It does a thing. Yep. Like, Did you draw enough disruption? Yes. No. Anyway, off you go. Yeah. But even then, like even if you just pull off the win con all the time, like it's just the same every time. Mm. So I feel sorry for the people that played it IRL and then waited and then is playing it now. Unless if you're some sort of sicko, which, I mean, you're into what you're into. <laughs> uh, otherwise, oh yeah, nearly finished dual triangle. Trying to, like, I don't know why I'm going for the, it's not the icon thing. What's the, the little, little nameplate yeah, thing? Yeah, the nameplate. Like, I've missed heaps of them before. I don't know why I'm trying for this time. <laughs> I want to be the king of Tempai. Change my name, nameplate. Yeah, I don't know. It's, like. it's not like your name. So on your player well, yeah, card, yeah, yeah. you get the four little things. I think I maybe changed that at the start and I have not acknowledged its existence ever since. I don't often change it. Like I get a few nameplates here and there because I just, I have love for the game, you know. Uh, but I very rarely change the nameplates unless there's like something significant that I'm like, oh yeah, that's a cool one. I'll have that. Yay. Uh, didn't play any IRL. I was about to play Millennium on Tuesday, but it wasn't to be. Oh, is there blue eyes around? Define that. Uh, did Rukasu give you a heart of blue Yeah, it's in my deck box. Thanks, Rukasu. That's Nam- all for my wish. Namaste, Rukasu. Uh, ben. <laughs> that's, that's two different things. I know this. Okay. Uh, anyway, my week in year. Uh, I played Mimigal on Tuesday. Ooh. Uh, it was fun. Very much for a prototype kind of slap together build, it was okay. Um, definitely I'm going to be making some changes from the list. Um, but ultimately it was just kind of a throw together, let's see how this will work and kind of formulate and figure out from there. Um, so definitely we'll be making some changes. Are you tempted to upload the crappy deck list? Nah, crappy. I'm, I'm going to refine it yeah. and, and make sure that it's a, a, a good deck list. Um, but it wasn't bad by any mean. Um, it just had some small areas where it could improve. Um, and thus, I will be making those changes. Um, overall, with the deck, I thought it was quite good. Had a, had a fair bit of fun. I can't remember if I went X1 or I went X2. Um, yeah. Honestly, I don't really remember most of my matches. Um, but yeah, I will sit down tonight and probably figure out what I'm going to change. Definitely, uh, Mimical Master is a one-off. Hmm. Uh, I legitimately was only playing it at 3 because I had the Quartz Eurezis. And now I'm like, this is not necessary. Um, See, and I told you you should have gone for the QCR field back. spells, and you didn't. Well, I pulled two from my case. Yeah, I know, but like you completed the set, and that's great. But you also needed yeah. to get the QCR field spells, and now you have a whole bunch of other QCRs from the new set that you need to get too. I don't think I want to get them. <gasps> well, mainly just because you know, save money for Japan. Ah, uh, um, yeah. I'm I'm trying to uh, probably over the course of the rest of this year not spend money on the game. But, uh, yeah, you already bought Malchami, so... Yeah, I have my Malchami. 90% but. successful. <laughs> I'm going to, for the rest of the year, try to not spend money other than entering to locals. So that way we can enjoy the trip. Coming soon. Me and Bragg doing a podcast in the middle of a park. Yeah, that'd be nice. We just got to find a park. We'll Will that be coming before or after the um, Legacy series that has also been filmed but not put out? Was oh, you well, this bring is going to replace the weekly podcast. The Legacy series is all shot, filmed, and ready to go. Done. Except for the part that I just don't want to sit down and have to edit it. It's on a phone whose USB-C output doesn't work. And uh, I have to upload it via <laughs> the Wi-Fi. Move it to Dropbox. Yeah, and it's, Dropbox a, to it's, it's a process. Yeah. It, it'll, it'll be around when I know exactly what I want it to be. 
I know I'm gonna have to do a lot of VO, and I'm just, I need the time to sit down for a day and do the VO and work on it. Um, but yeah, we'll make that work as well. Who knows, one day you might see that. Um, but overall, my week in Yu Gi Oh was fine. I'm gonna make some changes and see how we go. Are you trying to shame us for cutting room floor <laughs> stuff? Yeah, you didn't even help. <laughs> <laughs> I was here on one of the nights. Editing night? Well, that hasn't been yet. That's the thing, it's the <laughs> editing is the problem. Filming's simple. You just whack a camera up, stick some microphones on us, and away we go. Anyway, my week in Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, so I was playing Element Paleo uh, on Tuesday. Uh, still working out the bits and pieces. So I too will be sitting down tonight and maybe tomorrow night to make some final changes and switch-ups to that deck. See if I can make it any better. It can't be hard because it's fairly bad. Uh, and then... Uh, Master Duel, uh, finished all the bits of the dual triangle that I really oh, wow. wanted to complete. I finished the fusion line. I even went through the synchro line because there was more gems to get if I went through the synchro bit to do some more. Played Sword Soul. It was very much as I said, it's barren or bust. If you're barren sticks, it's oh, fine. I, I must say, I did log on to play it this week <gasps> because I had a grand total of about two hours to kill while I was waiting for my car to be done. Not nah, Duel Links, I was waiting for the next set. Uh, I've ground everything I can out of Duel Links with that fusion deck now. I'm waiting for more cards to come out. More support. I need Seven Roads Fusion. I need that card. I thought that card came out. Was it just the no, fusion just cards like, for uh, Seven we Roads? We got one of the fusions. Right. So we'll probably and slowly get fusions. the other like three or four. And then we'll get Seven Roads Fusion the spell. Which is, then we'll immediately get like semi limited. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I was playing the synchro fucking you say toolbox deck oh the one you already built or? yeah except okay. that took out the stuff that was like the pure way to play it and was just like put in all the good synchros to replace it it actually works really well yeah when you take out bad synchros yeah. and put in good synchros set up, set up like two disruptions and then the ability to go into the satellite warrior and pop four it's actually pretty good yeah it's not bad um, if I'd had anywhere near enough URs to craft it, I was tempted, like, for maybe a millisecond to do the links side of it at the end, purely because, uh, it was made aware to me that, uh, Firewall, Terahertz Dragon, completely out Senpai. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that card does. Uh, yeah, your opponent can't works. activate effects in the battle phase. Yeah. That works. I want to have it in Malice. Yeah. Just to have it lying around. That's and then if you make card. it with the, um... Gatachi adding Nister, I think it is. Um, you can make it unaffected, so they can't out it before the battle phase, and they can't do anything in the battle phase. Or it's very fun. Just play Sky Striker. There's that too. And win. <laughs> Sky, nah, it's boring. Sky Striker is so boring. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I did this week. Sure. Uh, so moving on. Not pre-prepare a segue for this week's news. That's okay. So, first thing coming up in news with Master Duel is the upcoming release of a new pack. Uh, so that's going to be launching, I believe, tomorrow? Are I we think. leaking this? No, no, no. It's, it's news. It's news. Erratas. Yeah, so the big news with that pack is that we're getting the Errated Summon Sork. Um, it was weird the other day when I had to explain to Kurt why Summon Sork was such a problem. <laughs> He's like, oh, this guy doesn't seem that bad. Yeah, he's like, I don't get it. I was like, well, let me tell you of the terrible trio of <laughs> Link Karibo, <laughs> Halka Fibrax, and Summon Sorceress. Let me tell you about a time when you could make Halk to summon a Mecha Phantom Beast, Link into Summon Sork, summon the Phantom Beast token, and then use the fucking... the Summon Sork. Awful and then times. you can make a Ruridon. Yeah. So, um... In that pack as well, they're going to be releasing a couple of other things. Uh, so, Hallowed, or Hallow and Ween, the specialty Halloween cards that are coming <laughs> to Master Duel first. No one cares a fuck about those. Uh, they Gold... look cool, though. They really yeah. do look cool. Look, they've put in some effort with the visual design. Yeah, the card only... design is not that good. My challenge for... Unless, sorry, unless every year now, they keep releasing Hallow and Ween support. Yeah, they'll be and make it roll like back to that weird pumpkin hello hello yeah oh i love hello hello yeah let's get it going what about mild turkey, oh, mild turkey. Uh, separate 
You separate. Can't, you can't love one without the other. Um, I was going to say my challenge for Japan, I think, this year is going to be to try and find the uh, that potato chip. Mm. Oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try and find that. So there's a few of them, isn't there? There the, was like a series three. of three different cards and yeah. like the whole three card combo was like draw a card. <laughs> I don't even think it was that good. <laughs> I think that was like baseline of what it did. Um, but also on the pack, uh, we get the Gold Pride Eradicator. So Gold Pride. the OCG support for Gold Pride. Yep. Um, we get obviously the Summer Sorceress and Moon of the Closed Heaven. Cool. Coming in as a UR. <laughs> okay. Is it, it, does this mean that they're going to ban it before we get the rest of the stuff? Well, wouldn't it be rare then? I was going to say, if they're bringing it in, they usually bring it... Like, they might bring it in with a, a limit, which does nothing. Yeah. Oh, but no, I can't go into the combo that If twice. anything, I could see maybe the... Oh, what's it fucking called? Uh, the level six. How many times? Like maybe, drama? yeah, that one... <laughs> what? No. Um... Level 6 reborn? The level 6 main deck. Ah, yeah, Engraver. Yes, Engraver. I could see Engraver being a super. Yeah, okay. And then send me here to have that. Have that be the one that they, like, knock down. Okay. Sure. How many times do you think uh, Closed Heaven will be summoned in the next month? Zero. Oh, before, well, on, on, before we get server things wide, yeah, yeah, server wide. Oh yeah, no. We'll way. probably see it a couple times for people like I like the ability to, to go climb. into my other guy. Yeah, to climb to actually go into the link five that it was I'm quote unquote pure designed underworld. for. Yes, yeah. I'm just don't know where it is. Uh, and then yeah, as of this Monday as well, the triad door with Hallow and Ween will be available for people to do to get. I'm assuming a pack. Cool. Hooray! Yeah. Sure. Um, and then I think that's all that's really happening on Master Duel. Uh, we had a whole bunch of announcements through the week for, uh, the Bonanza with a bunch of reprints. Um, bang, bang. So, uh, we've got Shrit, the strategist of Necros. Cool. Uh, yeah. Rageki. Yep. Machine Dupe. Yeah, I, I like Machine Dupe. Machine Dupe's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Treeborn Frog and cool. Starlight Road. For some reason I saw the Treeborn Frog, but I had ignored the other four. It was actually a good four. Starlight, Starlight Road is needed to be around, I guess, but I feel like she, Tin Cows was four years ago, I guess. Starlight Road is actually a very good reprint. I, I like that reprint. Yeah, I just, it just it feels like we've seen it recently, but it's actually not recently. Uh, time, no, it is uh, just stained into your on. mind from the Never Never times. Um, next, we've got Tragodia. Sky Strike and Mobilize good Engage. Reprint. Real good real print. Engage a really important Edison reprint good to know very important uh, toss no one wants to replay that format Ooh, uh, there's col- a few sickos <laughs> Colossal Warrior Colossal hey. Fighter where's Armory Warrior what huh? I thought it's Colossal Fighter but not it's Colossal Warrior yeah it says Colossal Fighter on the card but here in my list it says Colossal Warrior mm. okay. so I read it right but they're wrong actually didn't need a reprint it's a kind of hard to find synchro yes yeah. and it pretty is- stapley yes yeah. Uh, Where's Mir- Sorry. Mirror Force and Substitute. What? Substitute's yeah. a waste. It only just got a reprint. It needs more of a reprint. Does it? It's a $5 card for no reason. With different rarities as well. I suppose. But then, uh, I don't know. If they had the thought of printing it in this, where it'd be like, I'll oh, have a billion Substitutes, it feels kind of wasted now that it was in the set before. Where you could get one per two boxes. That was the problem. That's why it's still a $5 card. Next ones. Next ones. We have uh, Gauze, Emissary of Darkness. Gauze. Good reprint. Good. Yep, 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 yep. Dark End Dragon. Also yeah, another kind of tricky yeah, it's to find synchro. Yeah. Uh, Goblin Attack Force. Yeah. Not necessary. <laughs> no, one, yeah, no one plays that format. <laughs> uh, Ancient City Rainbow Ruins. Yeah. Was this not in the Crystal Beast set last year? I, I think so, but this card is weirdly expensive. Because um, one of its prints was like a fucking battle pack prize card. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, like... Oh, God. Oh, of course it would have been. Its top end is a big top end. So, it, this seems like a maybe targeted <laughs> at down. collectors kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> this whole thing's targeted at collectors. It's yeah. like, you've spent five plus years cultivating this expensive awesome, card all... collection. <laughs> I, I remember back in the day when Good Games did singles on their website. Mm. But it was a crapshoot as to whether or not you'd actually get the card. 
uh, the Battle Pack promo was on their website for five bucks, and it was like a hundred fifty dollar card at the time. And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Like yeah, it's a gamble. Yeah. Just never. No. Nah. Never got it? No, nah, they gave me the refund and were just like, sorry. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, and then rounding up on the list of band cards coming into circulation in Bonanza, Dandelion. Cool. It's not rounding up the band cards because we're going to see more. I oh, know, for this week anyway. We better see more. Yeah, Dandy's uh, alright. Didn't uh, it get a crazy day. reprint recently though? No, I'm thinking that it speed did. jewel thing. It was the Speedles, yes. Yeah. Um... I don't think that we went over these last week. So, uh, Mechanical Chaser. Good reprint. Injection Fairy Lily. Very yeah. good reprint. Magic Cylinder. Yeah. Diddy Assailant. Ah, oh, I love Diddy Assailant. Yep. And Destiny Draw. Collectors, Diddy Assailant would be really nice. Yes. Um, wait, we'll no, these ones are only available in Secret or Quasi. Oh. Um, Still course. Yeah. Make Chase a very needed card. It's actually, yeah, that card's ludicrously expensive oh, yeah. for no reason. It's oh. actually a good card for the format that it's in. Yes. It's a staple three of. It's also a vanilla, which is what I wanted. I wanted more QCR vanilla. That's what I good. want. Uh, and then Ancient Gear Golem, Cyber and Dragon. I hate it. Cyber Valley. This was the shit five. Crystal Beast, Sapphire Pegasus. Yeah. And Elemental Hero, Wild Heart. This was the shit five. Yeah, like... Pegasus, good card. Doesn't need it. Has plenty of high rarities, has plenty of low rarities. There's, like, there's, there's upgraded rarities, but that are still cheap. Well, that's GX. That GX fucking reprint set, like, more than 10 years ago now. Yeah. Jesus, that's dating the game. Yeah, but I mean, this is all... I mean, it was all reprinted last year. No, no, but for the Crystal, I, like, I quite like that print of Sapphire oh, Pegasus. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I was like, oh, I wonder how... Oh, wow. Yep. It's a nice print, and that print is old. And I get the feeling there was another one. That's ah, fine. We'll cover it next week. There's no Metamorphosis. No Metamorphosis has been confirmed yet. But you can vote for Metamorphosis in the Konami poll for what card yes. do you want to see. Your options for voting are Aeneos and Metamorphosis. Yeah, Those I'll... are the only two you're allowed to vote for if you watch this podcast. <laughs> uh, however, if you are voting on your phone, be warned... It's a pain in the fucking ass. Uh, yeah. It was not the easiest thing to navigate on my phone. Which is kind of wild that you would, like... You'd think that they would have the foresight to go, okay, like, given the age bracket of most of the people that we're trying to market to, mm. phone capability would be very important to have for this website. Yes. Thank ah. you. Oh, sorry. I found it. Okay. Uh, it was United We Stand... Ah, uh, yeah, this one. Mage Instant Power. Fusion. Yep. Mage Power. Uh, X Saber Gotham's. And uh, this big uh, like, Grandmaster. That's the one. Good for reprinting Gotham's. Yeah. But it, we need a Hunley reprint. That's the one that needs the reprint. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hunley is the one that needs the reprint. Wait, when's Dark Soul been reprinted last? Oh, Dark Soul's not even legal. It's not legal in. Yeah, it's yeah. the next format. Or the next, literally the very oh, well, next well, one. Well, we we'll care about subs, not subs, Toad. Toad and... Wasn't that legal for fucking... Not Ronin Toad. Ah, yeah, it's the next <coughs> set. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Okay. So we had subs, I always mix it up, that we had subs of Toad, then we got Toad and that's what broke it. Except it didn't break it for like six months. Because people didn't realise. Uh... It wasn't six months. It was, like was, was, it, it was another late. band list later. When people oh, were yeah, like, oh, yeah. fuck, wait, we can do this? Yeah, I got things we mentioned. It was our Nats. There's only like four people on frogs mm. in the room. And he, they all went well. Because everyone else was like Infinity and everything. And it's just like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a consistent FTK. Which I just didn't think of. Because I just didn't think about Mass Driver. Yeah, two frogs and you're done. Yeah. Or Mass Driver and two frogs. Yep. Reprint Mass Driver. Yeah, where's the Mass Driver reprint? You're reprinting Substitute. you got to reprint Mass Driver. Do you know what it's time for, Brad? Well, time for our weekly Multarmy Market Watch. Uh, well, oh, uh, I thought we were going to do this at the end. Yeah. I, thought, I thought this was an end segment. Nah, we need to... Or you could go into whatever the next bit of content you've got here is. Well, while they're doing that, uh, yeah. they have a quick update to the yeah. uh, Blue Eyes structure deck for the TCG. What the hell do they mean by this? I couldn't... So, yeah. the update reads as such, uh, and since the 25th anniversary... Oh, since it's our 25th anniversary, of course we're including Little Quarter Century Sparkle. 
In addition to a full 50 card deck, each deck will also include a bonus extra card, a second copy of Maiden of White, Wishes for Eyes of Blue, or Blue Eyes Ultimate Spirit Dragon. All three cards are already included in the decks as Ultras, but you also get a secret rare second copy of one of those three cards. What's more, there's a chance of the secret rare card upgrading to a quarter century That's... rare instead. Okay. Spoilers, they had already announced this. Yeah. You... They just didn't give a proper description as to yeah. what they were going to do. They've now just figured it out. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it'll be like this. Yeah. Because we were like, oh, are they just going to bump up? Are uh, they going to just straight swap it? But okay, so yeah. So no matter what, you have the base version of the deck and then the, the secret promo will, could be a QCR. Okay. Understood. Makes sense. I don't know. Do we want it? I think we did kind of... I don't. So, the extra secret is going to be worthless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, updates for the 4 Hours Market Watch. Um, we have a grand uh, new... Uh, card entering the market and that is the Asian English version in super rare yeah I've been thinking uh, that is $83 oh, wow that's, that's insane isn't that illegal it is yeah. illegal yes um, unless <laughs> and then weirdly <laughs> there's an English copy available from Japan uh, which will set you back 145 but the cheapest copy available in Australia in Australia is $260 hmm Keep saving, lads. Yeah. And that's your uh, weekly Mulchami update. We need the Asian English ones if we're going to play Singapore next year. Well, $85 for a super. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm that committed. <laughs> that's insane. We'll, surely they'll just print it into the ground. China will get all of um, their prints, which will be, I imagine, heaps. Yes. Hopefully it comes down. You can get the Asian English for $40. No, 37. Please, and thank you. We had some new cards announced for the Supreme Darkness set coming out. Uh, Two weeks. Uh, in, oh, in for the, the OCG? OCG? No, two days. <laughs> right. yeah, yes, it's very soon. Yeah. Uh, so, the first of which is uh, the Delta of Temptation, a new field spell. Uh, so, Foolish is a level 5 or higher zombie on activation, and then when a monster is added back from the graveyard to the hand, it adds itself back to hand and can generate a zombie token. Um, due to the artwork and the very strong implication that they want you to use it with Eldritch, it seems like an Eldritch field spell. Yeah. But, like, you're oh. speeding up Eldritch, which is not that fast. <laughs> so... You send Eldritch. Yeah. Okay. Eldritch sends yeah. the field yeah. so spell. No, no, this explain, back, this explains the other back. card. What was the other tri deck? Cyber Dragon. Did Cyber Dragon get a weird support card this set? They sure did. Clockwork Knight. With but, a K. But Clockwork Knight's not. No, it isn't. It's a Cyber Dragon. <laughs> it, well, it's good for Cyber Dragon and it's good for. What Spiral. Earth Cyber Dragons are there? I thought it doesn't need an Earth, does it? It doesn't need Earth. Oh, it's just it's a just secondary a... effect. So, uh, Clockwork Knight, one non-Link machine monster with a thousand or less oh. original attack. Yeah. Uh, so if it's Link summoned, send a face-up continuous spell you control to the graveyard, add Clockwork Knight from your deck to your hand, okay. target a machine monster with a thousand or less attack in your graveyard, tribute one of the machine monster if you do, special summon the target monster in defense position. Doesn't require Earth at all. Nope. Oh, I must have it's read just a translation. translation. It itself is an Earth machine, and Clockwork Knight, um, has machine. a secondary effect yes. that works okay. around Earth Machine specifically. So basically the combo is you make this, offer Hertz or whatever the fuck you want, you add Clockwork Knight, you then do the switcheroo, and then, because you've got Clockwork Knight, you can slow the entire board. Wow. What's his, what was his name in the show that was running that robotic knight deck? Well, you wasn't finally it, got the support. Wasn't it one of the big five? <laughs> I've run the numbers. <laughs> that was the Penguin Man. I'm sure it was one of the um, big I, five. I only remember Penguin Man and Judge Man. Valid. The other two were pretty forgettable. Yeah. Except they're getting support and Penguin Man and other men aren't. It's because Penguin Man is remembered. He doesn't need support. <laughs> He's got everything he Nightmare needs. Nightmare Penguin's remembered. Also, the entire Nightmare archetype. Nightmare yeah, archetype. that's how that works. Also, the penguins. Yeah. Yeah, also penguins. Painfully unrelated, but sure. Roll Penguin Garden, or whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, Support. Uh, Live Twin? Live Twin? No, what was the other Tri Deck? Live Twin. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so then we've got the Live Twin link. 
Yeah, but no. Um, so this one is called Live uh, Link. Abao Aku, the Lightless Shadow. Uh, so Link for Dark Fiend. Uh, so uh, during main phase, discard a card to activate this effect. Either destroy a card in the field, banish this card until the end phase. And if you do, special summon the light or dark from the graveyard. Then during the draw phase, draw cards equal to the number of different types amongst monsters in your graveyard, and then put the same back to the bottom of the deck in any order. Uh, interesting card. I quite yes. like it. Um, I feel like other stuff needs to go for this to be like a go-to Link 4 for some decks. There are ways to break this, though. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you just yeah. summon back Jargon, summon back Artor Christia. Yes. Like you can break this so many different ways. And because it doesn't summon itself back in returns, you're not then restricted by your own floodgate. It's so there's a one card combo ah, it's uh speed of a Teratol. Teratol, yeah. Is a dra is a Jargon off with this card. Yeah. Yeah. Or any level three. Or Dragon's deck. Any level three that generates two. So yeah, the material for it, by the way, is two plus monsters, including a fiend, specifically. Yes. Cherubi. Cough, cough. Yeah, it's always going to be Cherubi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not always going to be Cherubi, but quite it's gonna often it's going to be Cherubi. I mean, Unchained could do it. They won't, but they could. Like I said, other things need to go for yeah, this I, to be... Yeah, I don't think I'd... Like, yeah, Unchained isn't card. struggling in the Link department. No, I, th I think they've got their filth. <laughs> Link 5, question mark? Um, and then we got another card that doesn't seem to belong to anything, but if nothing else, the, cut, the artwork's really cool. Uh, Liberator Etho. Uh, so, 4,000 attack, zero defense. Um, oh, I hate this card. And then, yeah, it has a weird summoning restriction. Uh, the summon can't be negated, uh, and then it can't be used for anything to summon, and it's unaffected by monster effects activated by your opponents on your opponent's field during your turn only. It's weird. It, yeah. I feel like this is only going to go in stun decks. But here we are. Yeah. I mean, as I said, the card's like neither here nor there, but the artwork for it is just fucking epic. Is it meant to be a 5Ds thing? Is this something to do with 5Ds? It feels like a yeah, evil looks, dragon looks thingy. Very crimson dragon -y, doesn't it? Mm. Uh -oh. Somehow I feel like this facilitates an FTK. <laughs> I mean... When are you not thinking that cards can help an FTK, though? Yeah. Uh, and then quickly as well, unfortunately, we do have a delay to the uh, Speed Duels Battle City finale product. Oh, no. Uh, so it's now been moved to December 13th this year. The only thing this affects is the fact that we won't get rushed all sooner. True. Like, it's just don't... Print them early on, only ever release them in December around Christmas to try and get extra money. Also, we're not getting it. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's just... This is a North America exclusive product now. It's just... Just keep it simple. Just do a once a year release around Christmas. Yeah. And don't waste printing on it. I don't know. Just don't. Just print Rush Just give it up. Yeah, just print Rush Give me seven rows <sighs> fusion. Moving on to our Discord, if you weren't aware, oh. link will be in the description below. Feel free to jump in, say hi, and ask us questions. Mm. Our first one this week comes to us from 6 r 6 What well. company policy have you had the mispleasure of complying with? Singing a song to a customer, supply a cake or a carton or a coffee for a mistake, uh, wear something stupid? I don't think I've ever had to put up with any of that. Yeah. I think if I, if I had to, I would, I would quit. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I honestly can't think of anything that's been like, uh, not like inside the normal realms of things that you kind of expected to do. Yeah. Like the only one that I thought was annoying at the time, but I'm actually sort of okay with it now is that, um, we do like a secret, uh, birthday cake supplier thing where like you're given someone's birthday to bring in the cake for oh okay. so you secret center up the cake instead of just leaving it on one singular person who eventually gets driven broke and it's like well you're the one going to the fucking cheesecake factory every bloody week well no, no one told you to go there just go to Woolies we don't care yeah like <laughs> I don't know it just it gives a bit more variety people like change it up a little bit some people like to bake for them some people oh, like to do their own oh sweet yeah and some people just bring in stuff that they know they like which is that. also fine <laughs> Like, I feel like this is weirdly targeted. 6 out of 6, who hurt you? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, do, can I tell that story? 
Probably not. <laughs> no, let's run it. Like, look, in a television station, you have to put to air a lot of things that you like for it. would really rather people don't see this, but you do anyway. That's just called doing your job. Yeah. yeah. Next question comes to us from Falcon Waffles. Uh, he's just gotten his tickets for YCS Birmingham uh, oh, for yeah. next February. Uh, what deck should he play given the impending ban list looming between now and then? Millennium. It's. <laughs> this, it's Millennium this, will be fine. It's 7th, 8th, 6th, 7th, yeah? What are you saying to me? It's 6th, 7th, yeah? Yeah, he wants to know when Birmingham is. Uh, sure. I think it's the 6th, 7th of Feb. Uh, if that's the case, play Malice. Uh, I'm going to oh, say 8th, 9th. The ninth. search spell won't be out yet. Yeah. I say 8th and 9th, 2024. Play Malice. Take a shot at it. It'll be the safest deck that you can build. Yeah, seventh for the night. Yeah, you can, can also run night. Shifter, so you can turn 80% of other decks in the room off just yes. by dropping one card. That's very fun. Play uh, Malice. Yeah, also... No, you play Millennium, you can also play it. Yes. And you don't get hit by any of the other hand traps. Malice also good, though. Mm. Mm. We'll see about the rock, um, Mole Charming. Uh, yeah, I would also vote for yeah, Malice, we'll have the rock depending on your budget. That's the other thing. Um, otherwise, uh, Tempai? Blue Eyes, no, Blue Eyes will be out, won't it? Uh, uh, it gets released that Friday. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Blue Eyes is also an option. Get Blue your magic in now. <laughs> yeah, just, if you can't afford the hand trap, don't worry. We have other expensive cards you can't yeah. buy. <laughs> You can play this. What were they thinking? I know what they were thinking, but what were they thinking? Now it's now that more cards have been done, it's now a case of like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this or <clears throat> Magia is like it's good. It's very good in the deck. Yeah. Like, like you can play it without it, but it helps so much. Yeah. Having a triple negate with five thousand attack is quite good. Yeah. I actually think the the way you summon it is actually the way you play around Dark Ruler and shit. So you set up your standard board and you return activates Dark Ruler, you go, ha ha, I'm just going to turn my board into a Magia. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, his next question, Falcon Waffles, what is the best uh, event prep meals? Yeah, best event prep meals for a full day of dueling? Um, as noted from recent tournaments, um, what you need to do is get some... Uh, banana bread or raisin toast or something like that but don't just make it yourself at home you have to go to a cafe um, mm -hmm. pay a whole bunch of money um, well, not a whole bunch of money make sure it's nice and buttery and that'll give you a solid carb base to get you through the day yes carbs are your friend um, if you're having coffee make sure you have plenty of time to go to the bathroom yeah, before your have first coffee. batch no, you can't have coffee you just need to be don't develop the dependency it. But if you're like 90% of the other people in the world and you already I have coffee the and like coffee, you are still welcome to have coffee. Just make sure that you plan enough time to be able to have a bathroom break before you go and you shit start. yourself. You don't oh, have to shit. Oh, yeah, I'm going to think. I don't know what I'm going to do for energy this fucking tournament. Oh my god. Well, that's yes. Yeah. That's right. You and I will be down at the cafe. Yeah, but coffee ruins me. It makes me all twitchy and wigged. Just have it way. with less, less, less. Oh, it's decaf, it's less. Nice. No, not decaf. That's none. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Just what, what like half strength. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. No. That's, oh yeah, it's going to fucking Absolutely sleep. Absolutely not. No, right. one beer ruined me. One YCS. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. The Carmen's Oat Bars. I like those to get you through the day. Maybe a protein bar here and there. And um, the little yogis. The oh, the little, little yoga pouches. pouches. Yeah, I love that. Like after round two, you, it won't. It shouldn't be that bad in your bag. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go after yoga. It's been your bag by round nine. But <laughs> unless you're keeping it like with a little ice pack thing to keep it cool. At which point your cards are now. Well, if you have it in a cooler bag. Oh, well, you don't have it all loose in the fucking bag. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Ben! You just you just begging to introduce moisture to your binder. <laughs> So we have, we're just going to do a quick deck check. Do you have any extra cards in your deck box? No, but I have a yogi pouch. Yeah. <laughs> marmalade. <laughs> That's what Ben's got a jar of marmalade. <laughs> I can go get it if you want. Uh, actually, that's something I have to um, bloody comply with at work. Um, so cooler bags, a very good invention. Do they belong in the fridge? 
No. It feels kind of redundant at that yeah, point. Yeah, except our fridges all are just full of cooler bags now. And there's some Maybe because s- people were stealing other people's food, so they just left it in their own cooler bags. So that oh, so it's a protection thing. It's a protection trying to mechanism. Keep. But they yeah. could just leave it in a cupboard. It's a cooler bag. No, but if you take the food out of the cooler bag, then... No, but you're saying you leave the cooler bag and its contents somewhere out of the fridge so other people can put their stuff in. Cool all day. Cooler bag will only keep your shit cool like four or five hours. Yeah. Which if you're arriving at nine, you only need to eat it by what? Two at the absolute latest? Hmm. All I know is it doesn't belong in the fridge. It's, It's literally insulated. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, it hasn't affected me at well, really any of my jobs so far, but I can imagine it would be very obnoxious if like you're in a big workplace and everyone has like taken up the fridge space with all of their own shit. What about if they have cooler bags but they open them up so then the air can be... Then nah, people can put their it. sneaky hands in and steal Dylan, if you still watch, this also, is Noah's How big a protection are these cooler bags that you've invented for yourself? Like, <laughs> I have this impenetrable cooler bag. No one can enter it. I, I think it's enough of a deterrent. I genuinely do that people won't just open the fridge and go, "Oh, I personally I can't see all of the snacky cake goodness." <laughs> oh, no. I think if someone is malicious enough that they would eat somebody else's food without permission, yeah, then, then they're malicious enough to open bags. The, the difference though is that if they open the fridge and it's someone else's food just on a fucking shelf, it's food on a shelf. You can see the food. If it's in a cooler bag, no one knows what's fucking in there. Yeah. What they are they going to do? Go through everyone's cooler bag looking for the cake? Those fat fucks. <laughs> like, for this imaginary scenario that Ben's imagined, uh, if that is the case, just leave the cake out on a nice little plate, but lace it with laxatives. Ooh, oh, I thought you were going to say poison. Yeah, or coffee. <laughs> now, they've already had coffee. They've already shit themselves. They think they're safe. They <laughs> shit themselves some more. Uh, moving on from whatever that was, uh, Caleb asks, which character from the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series slash TCG cards do you think would attend a PDD party? I should have <laughs> <laughs> read through that question first. Okay, well, we talked about the same one before. <laughs> <laughs> All the big five. Yeah. That, gin, that Jinzo fucker. Probably Johnny Steps. Panic. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, I mean, no, Para- Panic's... Do you reckon Para and Docs? <laughs> Just Docs. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Pegasus, maybe. Para was the favourite as a child. Chancellor Shepard, I bet. Yeah, what's the teacher called? What's the professor in Dooley? GX professor. Gear, this is your this is your body forte, Crowler. Crowler, that's it. He'd go. <laughs> Fucking. He could probably name everyone of Chumley's cards, but can't name fucking Crowler. <laughs> <laughs> Chumley would be there. I was hiking up Bularu. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I slid down on all the baby oil. <laughs> <laughs> Swiftly moving on. Um, Drew D, uh, this is quite a long question. That's what he's good at. So like doing a banquet? What time? How long are we at? Uh, oh, we've got time. time. We've got the time. Cool. Uh, Judy asks, as I see here watching the MTG World Championships where last place takes home $4,000 plus various promos and swag, and the winner gets a six-figure payday and some cool additional swag, it begs the question of why, can, why does Konami treat its players so poorly compared to its direct competitors? And even more importantly, why do Yu-Gi-Oh players put up with it? Our pricing is crap, like three levels beyond crap, you don't want to do cash, sure, okay. Do a custom PS5 or an Xbox or do a case in the new set, maybe some high-end gaming PC, some good promos that are stamped YCS London or Top 8 Regional, whatever, whatever. Something to make the climb and the effort feel worth it. We don't really get player rewards unless there's some promo deal that involves spending $50 to get alt arts. We don't get cool promos or box toppers. Konami doesn't mm. even explain the ban lists and tell us where cards are well, and potential watch lists. Every now and then you come across an accidental announcement of justifications. <laughs> every four lists. When Billy instead. breaks on a stream and he's like, Yeah. Oh, I yeah, know this. This was a problem. It's like, oh, yeah, cool. Thanks, man. 
He continues, is this because Konami are a Japanese company and they simply don't care and have the mindset that you we Western it. culture <laughs> just don't get it? Or is it because they know that the player base will keep coming back no matter how crap they treat us? They have the mechanically best game, but it feels like they do absolute bare minimum to keep its players buying product. I agree with you on mechanically best game. Uh, God, the uh, I don't... I do think the Japanese company part is a huge part of the reason that it's just, it adds so much bureaucracy and just, I don't think it's done out of maliciousness. I think that everyone is trying whatever they can do and it's just, it kind of, like, they shoot themselves in the foot sometimes. So I'm also very confused as to how Wizards of the Coast can have that as price support for like magic because like, no one actively buys product for that game. Hmm. Like, it, a lot of it just kind of goes through on stores cracking packs. And they're paying cost price. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong, cost price like, is probably enough when you're selling cardboard. It's, it's very strange as to, like, how they make as much money as they do and can justify these things. Unless it's simply because, like, Konami isn't just a fucking card company. Like, the profits from Yu-Gi-Oh! are probably keeping up some shitty pachinko game that four people play, but yeah. they're like, we need to keep this pachinko game going because it's a Japanese company and they refuse to let things, like, properly die. Um, that can be my logic as to maybe they do both make the same levels of profit because at the same time, like, who the fuck's licensing Wizards of the Coast stuff? If anything, it's the other way around where, like, they're paying mm. a fuckload of money to get the Marvel license to try and get people to buy oh, Marvel Oh, they're paying fucking... for that. Or it's not... It's, oh, it's not There's a, no it's way it's a mutual a beneficial a thing. Like, what is Marvel getting from Wizards of the Coast Oh, like Marvel a split on that. I thought they would get, like, a, a cut. Maybe. But even then, like, that's a, that's money out of their Wizards' yeah, pocket. True, true. This is money coming out of Marvel's pocket still, to get this done. Like... It is cardboard. It, it's... <laughs> it's strange. Like... My only logic seems to be thinking that maybe some guys in the 90s that played ended up making, like, some big money in Wall Street and sit in big wigs of companies and afford to be like, oh, fuck it, yeah, we'll drop, like, X amount of sponsorship money into uh, Magic Worlds. Get, well, like, some shitty little fucking ad that pops up on there and be like, yeah, well, cool, off we go. Well, that's the other thing as well. Like, there is an assumption that they're still running a profit on these big events where they're giving out big prizes they may not they may view it purely as a promotional event for the game yeah so they get to stream they get to broadcast about their product they get to show people how games and things work so they may be running these things at a loss in order to broadcast the bigger thing of like hey this is what our game is isn't it cool come and play our game at the same time as well it's like the popular format of magic is command on that's not what this is like, this is modern support. Yeah, I don't see how standard like, is worth. The game six is a, is effectively being funded by Commander. Like that's it. The casuals fund the competitives. Maybe, maybe that's what we're looking at as the problem. I mean, I mean, I, I th- also I think a big factor is that Magic has to do that stuff. Pokemon has to, even though Pokemon's such a big IP. Pokemon cards are a sub section okay. of it, and so that you have to put on those events because to attract people to play the game because like if you're not playing for that reason you're not playing but we've got a bunch of animes that play the cards mm. so you kind of just got that natural inbuilt advertising so you don't need to run huge events it's going no you're just here to play cards because that's what you enjoy not winning money yeah like pokemon does a good job of having the full network of being able to be like also, you go to Worlds and you're going to spend a fuckload of money at the merch store yeah. on all of that shit. Where they're taking a pretty, they're pretty taking a pretty nice profit on all of that merch. They don't give two fucks if you're flipping it for three times the price. They're yeah, like, they've got that money. You mean we sold out of all the stuff we produced? Sick. We just made a killing. Good job, us. $500 for a slowpoke? Yeah. Whereas, like, these kinds of things don't really exist in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I guess... To the flip side of Pokemon, for example, their online simulator, you get rewarded for buying packs. So you buy packs, you get the codes out of your pack, you can put that in the online simulator, you get packs on there. That's such a good idea. Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, for as much shit as we gave them for a long time for having like predatory games like Duel Links, Master Duel is fantastic yeah. for yes. bringing in all kinds of players. Like, it is probably the least predatory, least microtransaction game 
like trading card game that exists. I've also said this for else. a long time as well. Yeah. Like you can happily go in for muscle. They give you enough events and promotions and like free stuff that you don't have to spend a fucking dollar on it. Yeah. You don't have to spend a thing. And then you then get the, the flip side or third point of that is Magic MTG Arena is pretty fucked in terms of trying to get like Always your own watch. stuff. So they're probably pulling in a killing there. Because yeah. during COVID, they made the conscious decision to give the middle finger to stores and be like, fuck you guys. We're shifting everything online. Go fuck yourself. If you survive, we'll see you later. And even then, like, F&M's never really recovered. Or I'm, I'm not sure if that's the, the case in other markets, but from the five stores that I can access within a two-hour radius, none of them really do it's, numbers for F&M anymore. Like, there's no way it's not a, a worldwide thing. It's... Like, it, it was an institution. You could not go into a game store it, on a Friday night. It also used to be a consensus that at F and M you either played standard or you played modern. Yep. Now a lot of stores are like, we don't know because our player base is fractured and everyone wants to play commander, but you can't run F and M commander. Like you can run F and F and M commander, but like it doesn't really mean anything. You're really truly just running a casual locals at that point. It's like the game itself is fundamentally fucked. And I'm oh, yeah. very surprised that they have found a way to keep funding things at this scale. Yeah. Cardboard. What's it's, the thing? I don't think it's the cardboard. I, I just... The thing is, like, yeah, if, they, if they were... If Wizards were running any other sort of game, probably long gone. Mm. Like, Hasbro would have kicked it in the curve. But since it is such a, a low margin, that they're probably just lucky. It's like... Wherever they get the 600... Like, the... Not... The six figures is another question I would like money in our game though but eh, whatever we're playing for pride <laughs> but how long can we sit on that soapbox though and go oh I play for the prestige I play for the well I am yet to whatever, whatever. I'm yet to attain my pride so <laughs> I'm still this, is not quite, this is not a question for me <laughs> it, it is also a case of like yeah what are you complaining about Worlds has 24 people to go to it like Good job. Which Pokemon's Pokemon. winding that down to, like, they've switched to a smaller worlds. If so. anything, it seems like Yu-Gi-Oh! is starting to contract as well. Where I think, was it WCQ Europe? They're giving out less invites for that now? From certain events? So they've cut them from 16 to 8 players? Like, I, th I think their regionals now are 8 invites regardless of player cap. We yeah, okay. need another title. Another chance. Like, we need another... Maybe, yeah, maybe a separate circuit. Maybe a third party. Yeah, maybe ARG should pull their figures out of their ass. Or pro play. <laughs> oh, PPG, play with their ban list. Well, not that, like, it's a very different way of looking at it, but when Good Games did run their Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series, that was only run for a very limited time because there just wasn't enough in it for them. Oh, yeah, you can't do it in do Australia. It. it has to start in the States or Europe. Yeah. yeah, and like ARG and uh, over COVID, at least in a remote sense, uh, luxury card gaming were doing a lot of that oh, kind of I stuff. Know about them. Yeah, and I think they still do stuff. Um, it's just obviously with a lot more in-person events and regionals and YCSs and stuff, people are more drawn to that because of the aforementioned prestige and stuff. Like you can win 13 luxury um, fucking tournaments and people are like, oh yeah, you're pretty good. You win one YCS and everyone's like, fucking, oh my god, he's amazing. How about we just get Rush Jewels and then have that as a circuit? Yay! It well, has the anime to back it. Is there enough interest within the Time Wizard things where that would be the separate thing? And like, mm. rather than like the sort of 50-50 that we have at the moment of like, oh, it's either Edison or Goat at this tournament, you know, a week in advance, go. It's like for the next six months at every major tournament, we are running this thing as a side event. It is 100% this. That is a weird consensus thing. Um, I did just want to bring up a, a quick point on your, your luxury card gaming series. I believe they've discontinued UDSs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, they run the Undisputed. Yeah. I, they kind of gave off the vibe that that was it. There is no more UDSs. Yes, yeah, so I guess, I mean, yeah, if they gave up that, they would have some metrics. That means it's not worth their time or effort. Damn. There was probably also a lot of people bitching about the two-round buys for people that showed up to YCSs with a UDS belt. And also the... Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's just 
Just two round bites. That was just two rounds. They also got like travel and the comp paid for, I think. Well, it's like, I mean, uh, gladly the champion yeah. cannot face me in round one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for getting them out of the picture for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't have to worry about playing Jesse Cotton round one. Fuck yeah. yeah. Round three, Jay Cotton. <laughs> <laughs> You've, you've somehow <laughs> fucked around and like gotten the buy round one and then played like the worst player on planet earth who won round one game two <laughs> or you somehow get the buy and you play down and it's like oh sick awesome round three. Oh shit oh god i'm both of the champ <laughs> uh i think there was one more question uh i don't really know if we thoroughly answered your question but it was a great Look, discussion point if nothing else bureaucracy and magic uh we can't judge wizards for what they do because they are in fact crazy yeah that i have no fuck we should be better it. than wizards how we do that no clue <laughs> through prestige and to be fair, honor like, and neither other of things the two world, <laughs> neither of the two world championships or like pro tours are promoted very well anymore like Magic Pro Tour used to be promoted very well, and mm -hmm. did very well, and now people don't really give a fuck. Like it's not Commander. Yeah, they're just like, oh, Commander gives money, so we'll just. Yeah, there have been there have been times where I've actively been like, like when the the Nadu shit was happening like two months ago, I was like, oh yeah, I might actually go and watch the Pro Tour and be like, how fucked was this? I genuinely couldn't find the content to go and watch it. I was like, oh, I'm good. No, I'm not going out of my way for more than five minutes to watch something that I was going to be bored by anyway. I'm good. Last question? That was the last question. So thank you all very much for listening and watching. If you are watching along, feel free to like and subscribe. If you are listening, feel free to favourite. Jump into our Discord, ask us some questions, and we'll catch you all next week. Peace. Goodbye.